How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. Busy, busy Sunday. Busy weekend here. Major League Baseball playoffs. We got football on today. Bad blood last night. You know what? A lot of criticism about the show. A lot of good stuff. Some really bad stuff. Uh, I had a blast watching it. It was a lot of fun. We, we'll talk about that, obviously. That Hell in a Cell match was something. We got the return of Dwayne at the end of the pay-per-view, the PLE. We got a new title. A lot happened on the show. It was a great Kevin Owens attack on Cody Rhodes. I thought that was really cool how they shot that, how they did it. The big story throughout the week, and we're going to cover this, AWWBD rights deal is announced. They announced it on Wednesday at around 4 p.m. I got the latest and I got the details on that. And a preview to Wrestle Dream that's coming up next week could potentially be the final Brian Danielson match for a very long time. I want to get your thoughts on this. Hit me up on X at Andrew Zarian. Message me. Let me know what you think of everything that we're going to be talking about today because there's so much to go into. I find, um, I found this pay-per-view that happened last night to be, uh, if they could do a 6 to whatever, a 6 to 9.30, man, that's a sweet spot. Let them run whenever the UFC is running. That was incredible for me. Now, if you're on the West Coast, I don't know. <laughs> you might not want to watch wrestling at 3 p.m., but for me, at 6.30, it was perfect. But I was very conflicted. I had the Mets on. I had to watch the pay-per-view. I had like 18 screens going. We're going to talk about all of this and a whole lot more when we come back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. I got to tell you, yesterday was a chaotic, chaotic day of events for me to watch. MG, my producer, was in the group chat that I have with the boys. And we were all showing our, our multiple screens going. We were all, uh, I, he's, a, he's a nice Michigan boy from Detroit. And uh, I'm so sorry, MG, our producer, for your Tigers loss yeah, yesterday. Yeah, it's okay. But, you know, we support each other. I was supporting the Tigers yesterday. Not necessarily my team, but I love an underdog. And those Mets mm -hmm. last night. They came right back at the end. You know, it, 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 is, it, is, it brings me such joy <laughs> to watch the Mets win for once. You know, lifelong Mets fan. I'm not used to it too often. I'll take it whenever we can get it. But playoffs are here. It was a, uh, it was a tough day of, of sports. I had to watch a lot, of, a lot of content. But WWE Bad Blood happened from Atlanta. Sold out. Jam-packed arena. I, I really enjoyed... A lot of the aspects of this show. A lot of it has to do with the fact that those old WWE nuances are gone. There's a lot of things that have changed in this company. Uh, pre overall presentation, camera work, uh, commentary is 10 times better. They bring up things that they normally wouldn't, like AJ Styles um, on SmackDown, if you notice. They brought up the fact that he was TNA champion and NWA champion. Fascinating to see that happen. But it's a very different company. And man, it started off with a bang. CM Punk, Drew McIntyre went over 30 minutes. Hell in a Cell. That was the opening match here. So it kind of set the tone. What are we getting? Ooh, my sign is falling. You saw that? Ooh, the ghosts are here. Uh oh, uh -oh. The ghosts are here. They're back. Let me get your opinion on this while I fix the uh, this sign. Did you? One out of ten. Actually, you know what? Give a star rating. Give a Dave Meltzer star rating for this match. Uh, I'm going to give it a 4.75. I Fantastic. think that's a good Dave It was match starring. of the night. Both guys were bleeding. Uh, the, there was a huge payoff of the bracelets, which, uh, what ended up happening was Drew took out a bag and people were like, oh, here comes the thumbnail, the thumbtack spot, yeah. right? Yep. And it wasn't. It was the beads from a bracelet. Those friendship beads that they you can buy. For yeah, yeah, yeah. Craft my, shops. my, That's yeah. You know, those are the beads that I'm constantly <laughs> yelling at my daughter about that I find all over my house. So it's quite possible that Drew came here in the dead of night and took them all. 
That's it, why your house is cleaner today? That's why my, my house is very <laughs> clean, and I'm not stepping all over them and, and bruising my, my feet. Uh, they were able to pay off the bracelet spot, which was nice. Uh, CM Punk uh, was selling after the match, and he was barely able to walk, which was a nice touch. He had a... Uh, a he needed oxygen. They beat the crap out of each other. This was like out of all the modern Hell in a Cells that we've gotten. This is this was a really good one. I mean, they did everything. He was also Sam Punk was wearing uh, the Shawn Mikey's uh, trunks. The color. Yes, it was the same one. It was the same color pattern that, uh, by the way, I'm going to get yelled at by Lance Storm for calling him Shawn Mikey's. Do you know that? Oh, <laughs> he doesn't like uh, as that. I'm typing, as I'm saying this now, once he hears it, he's gonna text me and be like, "Why are you calling him that?" I love my 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 weekend uh, commentary from Lance Storm that I got. It brings me such joy. You have no idea. And I show it to everybody. I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like, Jess, look, Lance is look at Lance's uh, comments about the show. She's like, I don't care. <laughs> cool. <laughs> You're getting yelled at by another wrestler. Great. <laughs> It always happens. <laughs> I thought this was fantastic. It's a day ending in Y, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, I really like this match. Those two have tremendous chemistry. A lot of people did not imagine mm. that. You know, prior to Punk returning to WWE, the conversation was that, is Drew leaving? That was something that was being discussed. I can't see that now. These two have been married for well over a year now. Well, almost a year since he came back. They've been in some sort of almost a year. January. Since January. So, even though he was injured. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. So with so obviously they they sold both of these guys were beat up and it looked like at the end so CM Punk was doing a hell of a sell job on the outside coming yeah. back. You think maybe there he's given him some time off um to kind of sell that and maybe keep him off the 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 uh, Crown Jewel show? I would I would well I would yeah the Crown Jewel stuff is interesting. Um I would say they should definitely utilize them on Raw. You know, this is a, they're going up against tough competition with the NFL. And you want to be, you want to give your best. You know, this is that weird low period, right? Survivor Series returns. Uh, Survivor Series is like the end of the season almost. And then you have like a month and a half, you have like six weeks of building to Royal Rumble. So, like, you're in a weird spot mm -hmm. now. I don't know. Maybe you could give him time off. I don't know. I wouldn't. I would still have him on TV. He's a tremendous act. We also got Nia Jax oh, defeating Bailey to retain the title. This went 14 minutes. It wasn't a bad match. It was a bit clunky. Uh, Nia tried a hurricanrana. The star of that spot. The star of that spot was Corey Graves attempting to save whatever she did. It's like her momentum. She sw her, she turned her hips, and her momentum caused Bailey to flip out of the. I'm just like, what? Yeah. Uh, they also did. They also did a lot of shenanigans. Like uh, Naya would get knocked out on top of Jessica Carr, the referee, and this allowed mm -hmm. Tiffany Stratton to come out and tease that she might cash in. And then. And then uh, Naya did her best Undertaker impression and did a sit up. And did a sit up, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and All right. They did like, a lot of shenanigans. Yeah, I think we're gonna. I think. I think. I don't know for sure. This Crown Jewel show might be where that all goes down, but that's for another day. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk mm -hmm. about that. Damian Priest defeated Finn Balor. This went twelve, almost thirteen minutes, twelve fifty. Um, I this was a fine match too. I I felt like there was no heat for this. Like something was missing, yeah. and and I don't and and those two performers are exceptional. Damien is exceptional. Finn is unbelievable. I I don't know what it was, considering they have built this for a long time. You know what I think might have helped? They should have brought out the other members of Judgment Day right off the get go, instead of having them run in. To me, that made a difference in just the um, yeah. tension. Well, this this was a run in heavy. There were a lot of run-ins. Pay-per-view, yes. Yeah, Again. there was a lot of mm. stuff happening. Again, it was a nice quick one, though. I'll take it. After this, we got a Triple H announcement. Triple H comes out. There's obviously a title in the ring. It's on a, it's on a podium that says Crown Jewel on it. They announced a new title to be defended at the Crown Jewel pay-per-view. Both men's and women's champions from each brand. Their current titles are not being defended. 
This seems it's just something for Saudi Arabia. You know, when I saw that belt, I was like, my father walked in to the room. <laughs> and he's like, my God, look at that chandelier. You need to have one in living room. I was like, Dad, it's like <laughs> he went back. He had like a he had PTSD of his time in Iran. He saw mm. all the gaudiness in the in the, <laughs> in the lighting picture. It was, uh, you know, like my father was like, my God, look at that. It's so beautiful. I'm like, it's so gaudy. <laughs> Why don't they do more of those things? I'm like, what? Bring out <laughs> chandeliers and give them away. I'm like, Dad, it's not a chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's a title belt it's not a chandelier it's a title championship mm. so uh they're going to seems like what they're going to do so you're going to have champion versus champion now uh champion versus champion but yeah. and then one person is the supreme the crown jewel champion the, supr the, supreme, the supreme the supreme leader champion yeah so that so yeah so so you get that for a year and then it's it's the um, owen hart cup in, yeah, in pretty much. Yeah. All right. That's cool. All right. But, I'm cool but with that. Only, it, there's not a full tournament. Yeah. You know? But we did get and, something here. So Gunther comes out and we'll pick up after the break here. Gunther comes out up and he would uh, he would interrupt the spot for Goldberg. You know, the, Goldberg was outside. He starts berating him, starts insulting him. Goldberg jumps the barricade. It was a great line about him being a one trick pony. And it may be leading to. Goldberg and Gunther, but also Sammy came out and ran. Listen, we got to go to a quick break. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. I ran out of time. I got so excited talking about Bill Goldberg and Gunther and Sammy Zayn that I forgot what time it was. Uh, I do like that he was in the ring. Goldberg got in and he goes, you're next, boy. So, I, I mean, I guess we're going to get a Bill Goldberg match and maybe Saudi Arabia. Maybe not. Maybe maybe at Survivor Series. Well, currently it can't be Sa Saudi Arabia because no, because he, he's, the way uh, it's going, he's booked yeah. in that. Um, so maybe afterwards, match. maybe Royal Rumble. You know, oh dear, that'll be something. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind seeing Bill Goldberg now. I really don't. I get what he's doing. You know, he comes out and goes bah bah bah. He does that. He kicks something. Mm -hmm. He bashes his head on the wall, and then he leaves. That's it. All right. If anything over six minutes, he turns into I'm a fine. pumpkin. Keep, so keep if it you short. can, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can give me a short match, and I'll tolerate it. Uh, me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we got uh women's world champion, Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley. Now, this was fascinating. <laughs> so Dominic's my my again my 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 daughter loves Dominic Mysterio. Okay, she was booing boo to Rhea. She loves Dominic, okay? And my wife turned around and goes, you know it would be really funny? I said, what? He goes, if he tries to leave that cage and he somehow gets tangled and he falls, <laughs> but he's like suspended and Rhea beats him like a pinata, okay? And I'm like, that is the most dumb thing I've ever heard in my life. He's not going to be beaten like a pinata, okay? And what do they do? She they did beat that. him like a pinata. She actually... She actually she, called that? I swear <laughs> on everything. She goes, oh, that'd be a great thing to do. That'd be really funny. I'm like, no. And I'm like, you know, I'm like Dave Meltzer booking now in my head. I'm like, I'm like, actually, I don't think they should go in that direction. I think they should go in this direction. Like, I'm taking it, like, serious. <laughs> and that's literally what they did. And my kids are like, mommy so, was right. I'm like, you could go right mm -hmm. for them. <laughs> she should go up to so Connecticut. The funny part is, is, the funny part is uh, he never he never stood up. They had it planned the whole time. I'm yeah. Like, Why is he not standing up? Other than they're saying he's scared of heights. But you're already <laughs> in the cage. Why wouldn't you stand up? Oh, it's because yeah. he's going to shimmy out and dangle. <laughs> and dangle. So he dangled. Rhea got a kendo stick, beat him with it a little bit, uh, said it's for her birthday, right? There was a logic hole there. Why Why did she tell the ref? And the ref, and he goes, I'm, I need one minute to go beat him up. Do you mind? Yeah, I don't know. That <laughs> was that, So it got a little wacky. Like, I feel like they had it, it all set, and then it got wacky. Mm -hmm. So he was terrified of heights. He didn't stand up. Uh, so he beats, she beats him with the kendo stick. Then Raquel Rodriguez returns. So right. a lot of people assume that she would be returning. Lays out. Lays out Rhea. The bell rings. He puts, she puts Liv on Rhea. Raquel puts Liv on Rhea. And 
like there's no count. It seems like what ended up happening was a referee called a DQ and he should have missed it somehow. I, I don't wonder know. If the only thing I can think of is he went outside because there was something wrong. They th he thought with what was going on with Dominic and maybe he went there and because he was in front of the, the attack, he had, to, he felt like he had to make the DQ or call. maybe, or maybe, a, maybe uh, when they booked this ending, they thought that it would be uh, a, a no DQ match. Yeah. And it wasn't. It should have I, I mean, I don't know. It, but, it really kind of should have been. With that but you could see it in Raquel's face. She's like, ah, oh, crap. Something happened. Mm -hmm. Yep. So then she just pulled her off of uh She just Korea pulled her off and, and took her. Yeah. So it, I guess maybe it, she's carried her like a baby. Now. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> she's part of Judgment mm -hmm. Day. I like that. I like having Raquel there as a muscle. She's impressive. Good size on her. Roman Reigns and the undisputed WWE champion Cody. Defeated Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu. This one, 25 minutes. This was a fine match. It wasn't, it wasn't like a, you know, it was a main event tag match that WWE does. A lot of chaos. Both Roman and Cody got these over-the-top live musical entrances. Uh, Cody had a marching band and cheerleaders. While Roman had uh, violins playing. Him down to the ring. He had like the, the Philharmonic uh, from yeah, Atlanta. He had like the Philharmonic or yeah. something, yeah. Um, very, I mean, just the presentation is so good, right? And Roman is, he was so tan. He looked like a million bucks. I had tan envy. <laughs> That's a lot coming from you. That's a lot coming from me, considering I laid out in my yard in 68 degree weather just so I could get a little color. Uh, I, I, I like this match. I liked it. I like Cody would end up taking out Jacob Fatu. I think Jacob Fatu's the guy. But yes, I want to... I want to talk about that. Like he is so menacing and dangerous and scary to see. You know, you, know you don't people don't look like Jacob Fatu. Everybody's so clean and so like he's he's violent looking, which I it, it is you know, exactly who he needs to be. You know the best part about him is is he the timing on the no cells. He has that timing that makes yeah. it even more menacing. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? You're no absolutely sell, right because it makes him into a monster. Right. It makes yeah. him into mm -hmm. a monster. But Cody would take him out, you, putting him right through the table. The Tongans would try to get involved. Um, and then there's a hooded character that appears. And you're thinking, oh, wow. Who do you think wow. it was? Who, Who do you think it was? Initially? Could it be? I actually thought it was Jey Uso. Uh, I thought it was I, Jey. I didn't, know, I didn't think it was Jimmy because I didn't know if Jimmy was coming back. I, I did not think it was, you know, any of the other Samoans. It was too small to be The Rock. <laughs> it was way Definitely too small too to be small. The Rock. He was way too short to not be uh, Hikaleo, right? Hikaleo's a tall boy. Um, Zila, but I don't think it was going to be Zila Fatu. I, I, honestly, I thought it was going to be Jey Uso, not Jimmy, but it was Jimmy Uso. He comes out, uh, so it turned out to be J Jimmy Uso. After Roman and Jimmy were leaving because they had a big moment, um, uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, place the timing so the, jay comes in helps out helps out roman jimmy and jay J jimmy and roman are leaving yes after the match they had won the match okay the after the match re the bloodline cody. attacks yeah. cody again jimmy then starts talk d d then then roman saves cody right i'm trying to it, it got so complicated you see this is the problem right it got yeah. so complicated mm -hmm. and then the show's about to come to an end and the music hits and it's Dwayne. And he has his title belt, which I don't get why he's walking around with that belt. Isn't it almost like he won the title at WrestleMania? He was supposed to win the title at WrestleMania, disappear, and now he's coming back with the title? Like, it's yeah, almost I like just think it's a prop. they just, I, I it is a prop. Mm -hmm. It is a prop. But, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's weird. It's weird that he gave himself a title. I mean, I know that Muhammad Ali's mm -hmm. widow uh, gave him that, apparently. That's Gifted the story. him, yes. Right. But listen, I'm gifted a lot of things. <laughs> I'm not walking around with them. <laughs> I'm not walking around with my Fair. trophy. Uh, I okay, fine. But now, where does this go? Cody was attacked by Kevin Owens by his bus. That became online footage. WWE did not shoot this. They they made it go viral. So that's something that's happening. Cody and Kevin Owens. 
Dwayne is back. So I'm sure this is leading into Survivor Series. So here we go. You know, the Bloodline feud is going to most likely be the War Games match. You so have did you have a chance to see the Instagram uh, Instagram video that The Rock put out like minutes after the show? Where he's drinking the tequila? Yeah, he's drinking tequila and uh, and uh, basically he basically gave praise to everybody, but then he said, "I really don't like your." He was he was going by the trucks and it was a Dusty Rhodes uh, photo, and he goes, "I like you, but I don't like your son." So clearly, it's whatever's happening is going after Cody. So yeah, I mean that's going to be the match, like mm -hmm. no question about it. That's going to be the story there. Which I want to see. That's mm -hmm. going to do major. Look at it this way, right? You have Rock coming back. You have John Cena coming back. You're in WrestleMania season. You're in Royal Rumble season. You're going to have a great uh, War Games match with the with the Samoans. You know they they are they have a nice couple months ahead of them with some interesting programs. Now the question is, okay, where do you shuffle CM Punk? Where does he fit into this? Seth Rollins is back. That's obviously going to be a feud with uh with um, Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed. Yeah, they got so, all the players coming back for sure. Uh, they're they're looking really good. They're looking really good right now. Uh, I I want to see what they do with the Rock. You know, this is you have some very unique opportunities coming up for that company to do some really fascinating, interesting things. You know, it, it's nice that they had Punk and, and and Drew tied together for this long. You know, obviously the pivot's probably going to be Seth Rollins because that's a built-in one. But after Seth, you have John Cena coming back. And you know what? One last time you could do that with, with Punk. And that's a mega match. Those two would have a great match. You could have them pivot to Cody. You could have them pivot to Roman. You could switch brands. You have all these unique matches to put together now. As long as everybody's healthy. And, and I was so happy to see CM Punk not get hurt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But as far so as a few we minutes know. <laughs> here, a few minutes here before we go to a break. Uh, so Triple H mentioned in a press conference that Cody wasn't available because he got beat up. The Rock went on Instagram, like our producer mentioned. Uh, he was leaving the arena pretty much so that he didn't like what was going on for the last six months. There were several legends in the in the audience, including celebrities. Triple H. Oh, this was interesting. Triple H on black That's representation cool. in WWE. He was asked about this. And his response was, I don't see color, I see talent. This was during a press conference. Not sure how that's going to be taken. Uh, I can we'll tell see. you it wasn't taken well online so yeah. far. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. When we come back, we're going to talk about AEW. They sealed their media rights deal with WBD. A lot of money coming to them. Also, Collision. Also, their pay-per-view next week. And some SmackDown notes. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. A few notes from SmackDown before we get to AEW here. AJ Styles returned looking bigger than ever. <laughs> I, I can't believe the size this man has put on. His, his biceps, his traps, gigantic. Well... He came out there and he had a match with Carmelo Hayes and very quickly he got injured. This does not, I don't know if this is a storyline. I know MG in the notes, you put that it appears to be a storyline. They announced that it's not. He has, he has an ankle sprain and he's getting, Ouch. Uh, yeah, he's headed to, to get uh, imaging done on it to see how bad it is. But uh, just a freak Didn't accident. Didn't he just break his ankle like a year ago? I don't, did he break it? Yeah, he fractured it last before uh, uh, WrestleMania last year. Yeah, so yeah, not yeah. this year's I, WrestleMania, but the one before. Listen, so, man, you know, hmm. carrying that size, he's not a big guy. Historically, he's never been a big guy, but he's put he's put on some tremendous size. He looks incredible, uh, and and your body changes. You know, he's forty eight years old, forty seven years old, whatever he is. You know, mm -hmm. he gets harder and harder. Dude, I'm forty. My knees are shot. Look what I walk around with. I'm not even kidding you. For people listening, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm, I have a <laughs> stick of BioFreeze that I have to constantly put on my knees because my knees are so shot. It does nothing. It just tingles a little bit. We also got a vignette of cars and Detroit. And it looks like yes. the Motor City Machine Guns are headed to SmackDown. I hope they call them the Motor City Machine Guns. 
that's going to be interesting what they do. So Give when me some they, names. I, I want I want the I want people to no, send me names no. on X. <laughs> Tweet me on X. Give me some names. Motor City M MCMG. They're not going to call them that. Let's say they're not going to call them that. What do you call them? The Drive By Boys. So someone just wrote to me. That's a terrible oh, no. name. <laughs> the Drive By Boys. D D B D. All I know is uh, when I saw that, I, my first inclination was, are we getting another pay-per-view in Detroit? Yeah. And because they showed Ford Field and I was like, and then, and this was yesterday on the pay-per-view. And then it occurred to me, this is what it was. It was yeah. for these guys. A W W B D media rights deal was announced on Wednesday. I, uh, this got pushed back every hour. I was getting a message by people. Uh, I did not. Some people on Twitter messaged me and they're like, Hey, when did your embargo end? Did you have an embargo on reporting? I'm like, dude, I never had an, an NDA. I never had an embargo. Um, I was never told a number outright. Around Tuesday, I started hearing a number. I heard 170 and above. Then a report came out. Uh, Variety Magazine. Variety Magazine. Are they a magazine name? Variety. Uh, put out the story. They got the first dibs on this. And I guess that's why AWPR was trying to time it. Uh, they broke down a lot of the information here, but their number was off. They said their source reported 150, and then there was a correction that was done. I'm assuming that somebody got a hold of them is like on the AW side or WBD side, like, dude, your numbers are off because this is $185 million dollar a year. It was that what Puck was News it? Report, correct? No, it, it, no, 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 no. Mm. The Puck, the, the or, or, Orand reported 170 and above. He did say that. Okay. Uh, and that was the number that was, again, I, you have no idea. You know, I've heard a billion things from, you know, they, they were going to get a billion dollars, which was, I mean, I guess you could be close if you're making, you know, whatever. But I, I did not see that as a legitimate report. Uh, some are assuming that WBD has a piece of AEW. And I find that to be very interesting based on things that I've heard and people I've spoken to. But here's the deal. It's a three-year agreement with a fourth-year option. Major boost in the fourth year. It's worth uh, $555 million over those three years, an average of $185 million per year. Again, they don't get paid the same every year. Starts out lower in the middle years, probably hits about one eighty five, dollars and then it goes up after that. Third year will go up from there. The fourth year would be way up, like I said. It's presumed, which it is, it's including pay-per-views in that figure. This is from Dave in The Observer. Dynamite and Collision will remain on TBS and TNT. As I reported, there is no information on Rampage. Rampage is going to be gone. This is from months ago. Those shows will also be live streaming, simulcasted on Max, much like how the NBA does things. So you can go on the Max app. If you have the Max app, you don't have to get cable. And yeah, baseball. I watched my baseball, baseball game. I watched my baseball game on Max yesterday. So, you yes. know what? I should have tried it looks that. It's different. Does it look better or worse than than TV? It it was weird. It was it was not as bright, but it was clear. If that makes so any I sense. So I watch on YouTube TV, and I hate mm -hmm. watching the Fox games because it's it's seven twenty p. The Fox games, right? But they use that four K wacky camera to celebrate, much <laughs> like how WWE does for the Ram. So I don't understand. Like, where can I watch this at the highest level? I can't. Right. Seven twenty. And I don't care. Max, I worked in technology for years. I worked in IT for years. My background is in technology. I, I don't care what you tell me. In 2024, you can't tell me that 720p is as good as whatever, whatever. I get, I get for over-the-air cable. I get for over-the-air TV. I get that argument a little bit, but we're in the digital age. I'm watching on YouTube TV. Why can't you provide YouTube TV with a 1080p feed like everybody else does? 1080p enhanced. I don't know. Sorry. I went, totally went off the deep end here. <laughs> uh, Dynamite Collision will remain, like I said. Uh, they're going to be live streaming it. Starting later in 2025, AW pay-per-views will be offered live on Max at a discounted price. So I could add something to this. It's saying later in 2025 because they're not 100% certain that the technology that they're implementing now will be ready by the next pay-per-view, which will most likely be February. That's the goal. They want to have everything ready in January. That's what I was told. The goal is everything transitions at the same time in January. But there may be a little bit of an obstacle with the technology that's being developed. This is something I've been repeating for how long, MG? 
about pay-per-view functionality on Macs? Um, it, about two years now. About two in years. In some form I, or fashion. We, yeah. uh, this is something, and I've spoken to people on the development end of that back end. Just happened to know somebody. He didn't really know what was going on. Obviously, he has no idea about an AEW deal. But this person was telling me, he's like, you know, the technology is very boxed in. There's no, it's not scalable like that. Where you could add a pay-per-view functionality. They have to redo an app. They got to do it with the beta testing. They got to test everything. So think about the time that this deal was completed, right? Which was not too long ago. You're not going to start developing a, a service without having it finalized. So they finalized the deal and they started developing it. So the goal is to have it ready for that pay-per-view. Which would be, what would be the first one? It would be Grand Slam, right? From Australia. Yes. Okay. I, I mean, they got, they got some time, so we'll see what happens. But they're saying later 2025, hopefully that's the date. Um, I, they will have, it's a non-exclusive pay-per-view. However, I believe in marketing material and on television, they, they, they can only promote Max. Okay. Even though it'll be on other services. So, and also BR is done. They're dead. End of life. So where, where am I ordering this pay-per-view now? Triller? Triller, uh, Triller I, is. Think is, I think is where we're going to have to point ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Per Discovery CEO, uh, they said that technology is being developed. Also, New Deal includes enhanced distribution rights across social media as well as potential new aw programming on linear and digital platforms meal in a match is one that comes to mind the um uh congratulations by the way to rj and renee on that series uh they have been they did a pilot it went over great with wbd it aired on the tbs app and you know they're doing multiple episodes now they just finished filming one a week ago two weeks ago something like that or a couple of them they film. A yeah. couple of them. Yeah. yeah. So uh that that's an example of other programming. Another one that I know people want, and I, I have no way of confirming if this is gonna happen, if it's not happening. But something that people have really wanted was a studio based show, much like a prime time. Multiple people like with a an recap AEW. Show? Like like a recap, like how it used to be with prime time. Yeah, like like a sit down, mm -hmm. like different vibe. Uh, they they have they have a lot of unique ideas. Certain people in that company, uh, nothing is formalized or anything. But you know, another one would be. Do you remember those late nights? Um, late night, like they would have like sleepovers, and it was Heenan, and it was yes. uh, Tony Schiavone. I forgot what it was called. That's also an idea, right? Like something mm -hmm. different, something cool like that. Great. You know what I want? What do you want? No, you know what I'm I'm begging for. I want at home with the Robinsons. USA me, up all night. I'm a big fan no. of with Ronda Shear. That's what I want. No, give me Tony and give me Tony and Juice at home. That, oh my give god! Me that, yeah, I was kidding. great. Tell great. me that wouldn't be awesome. That'd be great. <laughs> Dynamite coming up this week: Brian Danielson, Wheeler Yuta versus Claudio and Pack. TBS and New Japan Strong Women's Champion Mercedes Monet defends both titles against Emi Sakura, Willow Nightingale, Britt Baker versus Britt Baker in an AEW Women's Title Eliminator match. Hook. Calls out Taz attack Taz's attackers. Darby Allen and Brody King face to face to face. Brody who King is, face to face confrontation. Is, uh, Taz attackers. I don't know. I have no idea. Wrestle Dream Saturday doesn't want. They don't want to go against the NFL in Tacoma. AW World Champion Brian Danielson defends against John Moxley. We'll have this all recapped for you next week on the show. AW Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks, defend against Private Party. TNT Champion Jack Perry defends against Shibata. AW International Champion Will Ospreay defends against Ricochet and Takeshita. I want Takeshita with that title. ROH World Champion Mark Briscoe defends against Chris Jericho. Can Chris Jericho become a two-time Ring of Honor World Champion? We'll see. Darby Allen versus Brody not, King. Okay. I'm looking forward to that match. It'll be bonkers. And on Zero Hour, we have ROH Men's TV Champion Atlantis Jr. defending against Brian Cage. I totally forgot that Atlantis has that title. Did you know that? I totally uh, forgot that. It's because we don't get a chance to watch ROH all the time. It's so, like, in its own little box. 
that I forget to like tune into it. I try, man. No. I try. We also got the and debut. Thursday's one day. Thursday's the one day I don't really want to watch wrestling. I want to take the day off. So Thursday, Thursday's your day off. I get it. Um, we also mm -hmm. this week got the debut of NXT on the CW network. Did great ratings. Uh, was eight ninety five. They had the best demo for the station that they've had. Uh, it was presented very large. It was seven thousand plus in that building for that show. Let's see if they could keep that momentum. I thought Let's the, see I thought what the happens. presentation was amazing as far as it, yeah. it didn't it feel like a, it felt like one of those original takeovers in Brooklyn. It did. Yeah, it did. It and felt it, it had felt, that vibe to it. Mm. Listen, if you if you it's a younger show, right? It's a younger show. It's a little bit hipper, you know, with the characters that they have. It appeals to a younger generation. That's great. That's what you want. You want a, and you're on a younger station. I mean, what what's on the CW? That's what you got to look at. So this right. is a very interesting move for them. Now, I, I don't know if that number will be sustainable. I think if they're back to where they were with 700,000, 650,000, I think that's a very healthy number. USA was pleased with that number. There's not too many things on cable that could garner 600,000 views anymore. And wrestling is one of those. For AEW too. You know, AEW does decent too. They could do better now that they can, they're going to have to do better. Um... I'm very curious to see if NXT could keep the momentum because they have something really cool happening there. I think bringing in guys like CM Punk and Randy Orton is definitely going to help, but they are also developing great stars. So we'll see what happens there. When we come back, final few minutes of the show, Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. Hey, did you see Ricochet in Japan? Ricochet I was didn't. in Japan last night. He had a match. <laughs> he had a tag match. It was the first time since 2017 that he was in Japan. What do you think of his style? You know, a lot of criticism about the flippiness. I'm fine with it. Like, you know, everybody has a different style. I don't necessarily love every style of pro wrestling. I don't love every style of, of you know, like I have a specific style that I really like. And that's like the Danielson style. Right. My whole but, thing on his style is he's got it's got to make sense. You can't just flip to flip. If you, I, if but the I, you know what? I get it. But you know what? I'm there fine. are certain people that really love that, and that's great for them. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about pro wrestling. That's the amazing thing, right? You could watch all different styles of wrestling and appreciate it. You know what? Is it too many flips? It's not my style. I don't like it. I also don't like death matches. But I could appreciate a really good one. A really good story. Yeah, out. whatever. I, I, I think he's... I, I'm interested to see what he'll do in AEW. Also, news came out. Bobby Lashley signed with AEW. The Hurt Syndicate, the Hurt Business, is back in action. I'm very curious to see what happens with that and who they feud with. It's obviously leading to something with Nana and Swerve. And, and the big question... And Mercedes. Yeah, oh yeah, Mercedes too. And here's the big question, right? What... Is Shane coming in? You because really God, I hope that. he is. God, I hope he is. And I don't care what anybody says. That's what I want. I want Shane McMahon to happen. Why not? Why not? But give him that chaos. Fox show. You want chaos. Have, <laughs> have, have, have a different McMahon on the Fox show. Or, or if they are going to Fox, I don't know. Yeah. We'll find out. Guys, that's it for this week. We'll be back next week with a whole lot more pro wrestling. Wrestling Observer Live. See you next time.